And now let's talk about the half-life of radioactive materials, of nuclear decay. So what is nuclear decay? What are radioactive elements? Well, it turns out radioactive elements are elements whose nucleus change over time. They decay, they spit out a particle and change. For example, carbon-14, which, which is a radioactive isotope of carbon, once in a while will shoot out a beta particle. So let's say you have a sample of radioactive carbon-14. Once in a while, one of these carbon-14 atoms will shoot out a beta particle. A beta particle is an electron, a negatively charged electron. And it does so by taking a neutron in the nucleus and ejecting a negative charge and turning into a proton. If it turns into a proton, that means there are now seven protons and still 14 total nuclear particles. So this now becomes a, uh, something with seven protons and 14, nuclear part, uh, 14 nucleons. And that, of course, is the element nitrogen. So carbon-14 will spontaneously change into nitrogen. Another example of radioactive decay is, for example, when we take uranium-238. Uh, uranium, of course, has 92 protons and a total of 238 nuclear particles or nucleons in the nucleus. That means if there's 92 protons, it looks like it has 146 neutrons. But once in a while, if you have a clump of radioactive uranium-238, a uranium atom will shoot out what we call an alpha particle. An alpha particle is like the nucleus of a helium atom, which contains two protons and two neutrons, which means it reduces the number of protons by two and the number of nucleons by four, and it then turns into something that now has uh, only 90 protons and 234 total nucleons, and that is the element thorium, thorium-90. So the rate at which it does that will determine how long this radioactive material will be around. If it goes, does it very slowly, it'll be around very, for a very long time. If it does it really fast, it will decay very quickly. And associated with that is something called the half-life. For example, if you have a certain amount of, let's say, radioactive carbon-14, and you wait a long period of time, for example, 5,730 years, which is the half-life of carbon-14, then half of the carbon-14 will have decayed, and the other half will still be radioactive carbon-14. So that's what the half-life means. So in the case of carbon-14, the half-life, and one way to denote the half-life is a T with a, one, with a sub one-half like that, for carbon-14 is equal to 5,730 years. Now, the misconception is that means that, oh, after twice as long, then all of it will be gone, but that's not the case. What that means is after one half-life, you now have half of the radioactive carbon-14 remaining. After another half-life, after two half-lives, so two times 5,730 years, <clears throat> Now, half of what was remaining will now also have decayed. So the first half is gone after one half-life, and what's remaining, half of that will now decay, and now you're left with one quarter of the original radioactive sample still being radioactive carbon-14. After three half-lives, three times 5,730 years, again, half of what was remaining will then also decay, and now you only have one eighth of the original sample left. So after another half a half life, the first half was gone after the first half life. This was gone after the second half life. And of what's remaining, that will be gone. So now you only have one eighth of the original sample still being radioactive carbon 14. And after another half life, after four times 5,730 years, now you half of that will be gone. So after the first half life, Half will have decayed after the second half-life, half of what was remaining after the third half-life, this will have decayed, and finally after another half-life, this will have decayed, and now you're only left with 116. And now you can see the pattern. Of course, after five half-lives, you only have 132nd of it left. After six half-lives, 164th, and so forth. So the amount remaining, one way to think about it, the amount remaining and we talk about the radioactive portion of the sample, the amount remaining, so let's call it A, is equal to um, 1 over 2 to the number of half-lives. 
And of course, if you let that equal n, then you could say that the amount remaining a is equal to 1 over 2 to the n, where n is the number of half-lives. So if there's four half-lives, it's 1 over 2 to the fourth power, which is 1 16. Five half-lives, 1 over 2 to the fifth is 1 over 32. And after six half-lives, 1 over 64, and so forth. So that's how you determine the amount remaining after a certain number of half-lives have elapsed. Now, of course, in the case of uranium, 238, you can use the same formula, but then instead of half-life being uh, 5,730 years, the half-life would then be equal to uh, 4.468 billion years. So you have to wait 4.5 billion years for half of uranium-238 to have decayed into thorium-90. So that would be the half-life for uranium-238, as opposed to this being the half-life for carbon-14. So let's write it down here, carbon-14. Now, some things decay very quickly. For example, radon gas, which is a naturally occurring gas that seeps up into the basements of some homes, the half-life for that is 3.82 days, so it decays very, very quickly. After less than four days, half of it has decayed, and after another four days, another half of that has decayed, and so forth, so you can see that that is a very radi radioactive gas and pretty harmful to live in a house that contains too much radon gas. But at least now you have a pretty good idea of how to calculate how much is remaining based on the knowledge of the half-life of a radioactive material.